Hi guys, thank you for tuning into my YouTube channel Retro Django here. Today let's take a look at one of my Amiga 2000 boards. This one I just put it out for sale on my uh, Facebook group and it was just sold in a flash guys. Come on in and join. It's called Commodore 64-Amiga Retro Django. Come on in and join guys. We have awesome retro talk buy sell trades you know everything in there but this one it just it was gone in a flash guys so i just want to film it i want to have it on youtube before i ship it up to the uk <laughs> so yeah here we go it's an amiga 2000 boards it's the revision 6 it has got the um, the possibility to uh, put in a graphics card here we have got the ca chips here Gary here, <laughs> Fat Agnes over here. This one has got the built-in one megabyte of RAM. That's nice, it has got one megabyte of chip RAM. You can buy mega chip edition, so you can get the AD375, I think. You can just pop in here, uh, included one megabyte extra chip RAM, so you can have two megabyte on this one. It's beautiful, it does not have no a controller for IDE SCSI so you have to put in an external card here at the slots over here but it has got of course connection for a disk drive over here uh, a lot of uh, connect uh, power for different expansions you can have two disk drives your own drive whatever you want to install these Amiga 2000 cabinets they're big bulky awesome looking with a lot of store for a lot of expansion again graphical expansion better processor over here so uh, i don't know it's it's just a great card and i just remember the mega 2000 was just a dream in the magazines and the mega 500 did cost about five thousand danish crowners and in the same magazine you could have these for nineteen thousand danish crowners back then and uh, four times the price of an Amiga 500 and basically it, it, it just has these expansions other than other than that this one this one came with came with one megabyte here but the older revision revision 4 um, this phono stick was missing and it came with 512 I think I'm, I'm not sure guys or it also had one megabyte but with more chips I'm not sure about the old revisions I I don't like the old revisions <laughs> it has to be revision 6 and newer for my taste so you can put it in old 20 card old 30 card and really have fun with these Amiga uh, 2000s it, it came with the 68,000 CPU over here kickstart over here the problem with these ones when you want to buy one of these the first thing you have to check is the condition over here because these came with built-in Vaja battery from the fabric and oh my goodness I have seen some of these boards that were just one of them I bought fully working in the description when I got it home I found out that this was uh, stored on the side and all the battery juice was just down here and I remember these were just eaten away all the all the connectors everything was just dead and yeah again I bought it as a fully working one but uh, well it wasn't working when I got it home <laughs> now Okay, so the Vata battery, um, first thing, it can have damaged the socket for the CPU, that's almost certain. <laughs> so I have seen a lot of times um, the first five, six, seven of these legs are totally destroyed on the socket and on the IC. I have seen the connect uh, in another Amiga 2000, the connection between the CPU socket and this one was dead and when these two are not connected the proper way your Amiga 2000 won't boot but the most common issues I have had was actually the first four legs from here 
uh, some of them goes to the kickstart and I had to make some jumper wires and all that really really common problem guys so if you have battery issues and the Amiga won't boot I would say replace the socket replace this one and replace this socket also, it will actually destroy some of these. It will destroy the connector for the keyboard won't work again from the Vacha battery. I have also seen the battery on the back side of the board. So you just, you have to check that out also. So if you don't have that great soldering skills and you find one of these boards, I mean, everything is hold through. It is easy, but it's not, um, it's not the, not the easiest thing to, to, to start with because I mean one trace dead it can just lock the system but it's fun to work with and if you have some friends that loves that you can you look at it together or you know get help in the f Facebook groups and, and, and all that so yeah so if you want to buy the 2000 this is the first place you want to look guys so as you can see this one has got some it has had some battery problems down here but um, yeah nothing that dangerous no so this is how the board looks and over here we have the PSU that's nice and as you can see I have it's a noisy fan I have installed a GoCheck drive and um, something is loading from the drive <laughs> I don't know why, guys, what guys, but uh, yeah, I just want to show you the. Um, I just want to show you the Mega 2000 board, guys. Now that it's gone already, oh, it's more boards. And as you can see here, one megabyte of chip RAM. Beautiful. And it can run, you know, most of the games from a GoTech drive. This one, uh, they usually come with Kickstart ROM 1.3, but this one has two Kickstart ROM 2.05. I actually prefer the 1.3 if you want to use if you want to use GoTech drive, then I will definitely pr prefer Kickstart 1.3. But if you want to upgrade, why not something newer? Also, some of you guys, you like the look of the newer workbench. I love them both. The old, the new, doesn't matter for me. Nostalgic reasons, I, <laughs> I love them both. My first Amiga was the Amiga 600, so I know this workbench. But um, later I got the Amiga 500, and now I love my Amiga 500 Plus. It's just great. <laughs> Warlords. These GoTrex drives, they're just they're great, man. They're just so simple to use and it just works. This GoTrex has OLED display that just turned off. There we go. As you can see, you can see the disk number and yeah. So what to do when you buy one of these? Again, first check out the battery of course other than that it's a good idea to recap it has got some pull through caps and they're actually pretty easy to yeah, replace but one thing that we often forget about is actually the PSU don't miss that one recap the PSU also so it can get some quality power through these lovely lovely cables 5 volts 12 volts I think it gives minus, yeah, minus five, minus 12, and ground. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, recap this one also. Replace the fan in here so it doesn't uh, irritate you as it does right now for me. Other than that, rock solid board, guys. Oh, the only thing this one has actually that is different from the Amiga 500 is actually this chip. And this one controls the Zorro connectors over there, guys. So, yeah. So, this is just a quick look at my Amiga 2000 board revision 6 that got sold instantly on my Facebook group. <laughs>
So I just want to say thank you for watching, thank you for listening guys and if you like the Amiga 2000 as much as I do, please share your history on the comments down below. I remember at school we were looking at magazines, small kids, most of us had the Amiga, uh, most of us had the Commodore 64, but um, we wanted the Amiga and uh, I mean some of us could afford the Amiga. 500 but this is 2000 it was it was just a dream for us man it's so nice to play around with all those you know amazing amigas from back then guys until next time stay safe and have a great great day bye